Good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> I decided to get on here and share some of my thoughts um, and also share a little bit of my journey over the last uh, couple of months. Our country has taken um, a big turn and it'll be interesting to see where we come out on the other side. So, um, without I have a lot of all my, I have a lot of thoughts, so I wrote them out. So I'll be uh, just kind of going over what those are. <clears throat> so over the past few months, uh, what's going on in our country has pushed me into the deep end of my history. What I've learned has shaken me to the core, pushed me to the edge, enraged me, made my brain hurt crushed my heart, sent me to sleep in tears, and brought me to a deeper appreciation for the truth. Now that I've come to a healthy place in my process, I'm ready to share my journey, what I believe can help and make myself available moving forward. The conversation needs to be started, but more importantly, we need to continue the conversation after the emotion is worn off. This first part is going to be hard to hear, but please stick with me. Truth doesn't always feel good, but it's always worth it. Challenging our beliefs is essential because our beliefs aren't always what's right. I want to start by saying I've been ignorant. Please forgive me. These are some things that I've learned about black history in the last um, couple of months, and I want to share those. <clears throat> Black people have been on American soil for as long as white people have. In that time, black people have zero to uh, zero generational wealth. Home ownership and land is the driving force behind generational wealth and wealth. Owning land and homes allows you to draw on your own equity rather than debt from banks, creating uh, many opportunities for self-sufficiency. While black free men after slavery were paying every penny to any land, um, they could never really make it profitable. Meanwhile, their white peers were being leased land for next to nothing, um, giving them the opportunity to build generational wealth. Black people created and ran an amazing business community. It was hustling and bustling. Um, they were self-sufficient. The entire community was what they called Black Wall Street. It was purposely destroyed by white people, leaving them again with nothing. After slavery was over, it morphed into slavery of a different name, which we know as sharecropping. This was used to keep black people in debt to white people and, tried, and tied to the land that they worked, never having the opportunity again to own and profit off their own land. After Abraham Lincoln um, wrote and passed a bill called Freeman's Bill, this would give every freed slave male, uh, male slave four acres of land and a mule. Uh, the purpose of this was to get started in becoming self-sufficient um, and get on their feet after slavery ended. Abraham Lincoln was assassinated and after him, there were five Republican presidents that disregarded and disbanded, dismantled the Freeman's Bureau created by Lincoln. This again left black people with nothing. Native Americans, Asians, and Jews directly affected by atrocities that took place at the hands of white population and their descendants are, re are re receiving payment for what happened to them on American soil. Blacks still receive nothing, and this keeps being rejected in 2020. Between 1934 and 1968, black people were refused home loans while their white peers were given home loans in high-value areas. Banks used a red line chart to determine where home loans would be given, based directly on race. Green areas were high-value, um, which created white neighborhoods, and red were low-value property. Walls and fences were actually erected forming what we know as projects. In 1968, when the Fair Housing Act was put into play, none of the property values were recalculated 
leaving the red line chart essentially the same as before, which still affects us in 2020. Schools are more segregated today than they were during Jim Crow because of redlining. Since black people weren't given home loans in green areas, they typically didn't send their children to white schools. Black people have notoriously had black, uh, bad schools because of redlining. Schools are funded by property tax. So since red areas had low property value, their schools reflected less funding, whereas green areas reflected, uh, had high values and reflected schools with more money for supplies, um, equipment, resources, curriculum, and teachers. This still affects us in 2020. Uh, black and white people used drugs at roughly the same rate. However, the main areas for the fight against drugs was concentrated in redlining areas, meaning a much higher percentage of black people went to jail while whites remained free for the same crimes. Welfare was originally created with the requirement that women could receive as long as the father wasn't in the house, breaking the family unit and sending men to the streets. Compton wasn't always a relentless ghetto. It started in the middle class suburb in 1948 when the 14th Amendment finally made it uh, illegal to restrict black people from occupying property, they had the finances to buy homes and they went to Compton. Uh, white people terrorized them through the 40s and 50s, followed by quickly moving because of threats of lowering the property value. And now we see what Compton is today. Many of the life-saving and gynecological procedures we are used to today were um, at involuntary sacrifice and experiments of black slave women. A lot of these procedures left black women sterile, maimed, or dead, but today we see them as successful and they save a lot of lives. Um, at every turn, white leaders created systems to hinder black people from being self-sufficient and creating generational wealth for their families. They used and abused the black population for their own gain. Black people are 400 years behind white peers, although we are free to actually build businesses and um, through entrepreneurship and other ways now. Um, in the beginning, the Constitution wasn't created with black people included. In fact, we didn't even count as a whole person. We were three-fifths. Now, a lot of times the thing that is um, recited is not the Constitution, it's the Declaration of Independence. And in that, it says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. This didn't pertain to the black population, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving uh, their just powers from the consent of the governed. Um, this didn't pertain to the black population, so this created a problem. <clears throat> However, it goes on to say um, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, the Constitution was created to protect the rights of the people, which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish or to institute new government laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. And we see this happening in the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. Laws were changed. Equality was created. Um, and finally, I understand white privilege. In this way, <clears throat> my husband and I seek to create a path of success for our children. If when they grow up, they have peers whose parents didn't, uh, didn't set them up for a path of success, our children would be seen as privileged. Now, this is what happened on a mass scale. Um, so where do I find myself now? Well, needless to say, my heart has been incredibly heavy over the past few months. I've sought wise counsel from elders, family, and friends. What I realize is although I look at a black face every day and I don't consider myself sheltered, my reality was being raised in a white culture. 
I grew up in white neighborhoods. I went to white schools and I have what's called a white mindset. It's the reason why a lot of the times I'm considered not real black. Um, but I still couldn't escape black experiences. I've been racially profiled, thrown in jail because I was black. I've been called racist names. I won't repeat here. I've been raped. I've dealt with police brutality. I've had phone calls with white people only to meet them in person and see their facial expressions of disappointment. Um, I've been told my hair wasn't appropriate for the workplace. I've been near poisoned with food at a restaurant because I was black. All of these experiences I couldn't escape, even though I grew up in a very different place. I thought I knew, but what I was missing was the deep understanding of the pain um, and agony of the past I now see is still woven into our everyday lives. Now with all of this said, with all of those facts that I've given, with all of that stuff, after being consumed with the realities of my black history, I'm devastated. As I lay in bed at night, soaking it all in my mind, filled with confusion and so many questions. Why and what was it about having black skin that made white people actively work to cause despair and create systems that purposely left blacks poor, turning to criminal activity and kept uneducated? Why as humans did they want to see other humans fail? Did they enjoy watching the destruction of black population? Why did they not consider us humans? How am I different? My inner making is exactly the same. The four chambers of my heart are the same as yours. What was the real threat of, um, be, of a successful black population? All, as I look around, seeing how all of these heart-wrenching systems are still affecting us today in 2020, I can only have one response. I forgive. I choose to be kind and have courage to stand against the grain and be set apart in the midst. We know that the natural state of man is far from what our world would have us believe. The natural state of man from the Lord's perspective says that the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. He says again, <clears throat> after the flood, after he's taken the initiative to destroy it all because it's only continually evil. He says, I will never again curse the ground because of man for the intention of man's heart. The intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike down every living creature as I have done. Again, in Mark 7, he says, For from within, out of the heart of a man, come evil thoughts, sexual morality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, which covers a multitude of things, deceit, sensuality, envy, slammer, slander, pride, and foolishness. And again, in 1 Corinthians First Corinthians, he wraps it up by saying, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Why did all this happen? It's because the, the hearts of men are uh, continually evil. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? So all of the questions that filled my head, how could I understand it? The intentions of men are desperately wicked. And it's not just white people. <laughs> That's just the thing. It's all men. So again, I choose to be kind and have courage and stand against the grain to be set apart in the midst of all this chaos. I refuse to allow hate and suffering to enter my life because I'm a free woman. Not in the sense of a physical slave. No one is a physical slave anymore. But I'm free from any and all things that threaten my peace. Jesus saved me from myself and everything else that would come to threaten me. Giving in to the anger, pain, and the hate that my black history can create will kill my joy. I won't allow it. And I won't let my children grow up with it either. My black history will not plague my life. 
My mindset won't allow me to be consumed by hate. Pain never justifies destruction, and my behavior isn't determined by the behavior and actions of others. Truth be told, generational wealth isn't our real legacy. Sorry, it's blurry. (laughs) Jesus is. Are you setting your legacy on sand or the rock? I have five boys, and our boys will never hear the what it's like to be a black man in America speech. Rather, we will continue to have the conversation with them that they are as capable as any of their white peers, that they can accomplish anything that their white peers can, that respect and humility gets you farther than pride and dishonor on any day, and will continue to build strong character paired with productive conflict management skills. No person on earth will convince my black family we are less than oppressed or held back because of white supremacy. We have more freedom than we know what to do with, no matter what our forefathers did. Real justice comes at the feet of the Lord Jesus in final judgment. Those who have actively participated in any and all racism will answer for it. It will not go unpunished. Those who refuse to let go of the hatred and the vengeance will not go unpunished. They are two sides of the same suffering coin. The history is real. I get it. The pain is real. However, I'm not a betting woman, but I'd be willing to guess that this generation is not knowing this history. They are being pa- the only thing being passed on is, the, is the, um, the feelings about it, not the information and how to effectively handle it and overcome. This is a serious problem. I will never expect white people today to feel guilty for what our forefathers have created. I don't care that millions of white people benefited and some continue to benefit from these crooked systems. It's not their fault. I do not want white people to feel pain because I and my ancestors have felt pain. I'm not interested of revenge in any kind. I do not want to return hurt for hurt. What I do want to see from white people is that they educate their children on real black history that goes further than Martin Luther King's Jr. I have a dream. It goes much deeper than that, including white parents with black or biracial children. Just being black isn't enough. They are experiencing your privilege to a degree. I did. I want white people to educate their children that Treating people of every, every color with humility and respect is invaluable and required. I want white people to see color, see my color, and love me anyway. Stand up for people of color that you see are being treated unfairly. I want white people to stop being unhelpful by dwelling in and promoting pain and oppression. Sayings like, Using big words around black people as racist isn't helpful, it's condescending, and it's rude. Keep standing up and calling out what's wrong with the situations we see in life. I want white people to stop pandering and stop the white guilt. If you're actually racist, change. I want white people to educate themselves and understand that the black population aren't poor and uneducated criminals necessarily by their own accord. We live what we were taught. And this is a lot of years of being taught the wrong things. I want, um, what I, okay, so what I don't want to see from black people, I don't want you to just forget. I don't want you to just get over it. I don't want you to stay ignorant to the depth of your history. I don't want you to seek revenge. I don't want you to ignore those who are on your side. The tables have turned. This is not 1820. You have more white people on your side than ever a time in history. Don't accept the narrative that you're oppressed and don't suffer from the past. What I do would like to see from black people is that you would educate your children on a broader history than just slavery so we can talk about solutions. 
I want black people to stop playing into the roles portraying black culture as pimps, hoes, drugs, and violence. We are more than that. I want people in power to stop just dumping money and also help bring a new mindset of success. New priorities. We buy a house before we buy an $80,000 car to look like we're something and to demand respect. That's not how it's done. I want black people to forgive and find healing for their hurting hearts. I want black people to stop ignoring the issues that we can fix. Come together and create a plan to change our laws. We have so many people on our side. Everybody sees the injustice. Not everybody, but the majority of people see the injustice. If you don't think it can be changed, refer, remember that the Constitution didn't include the black population. The 13th, the 14th, and the 15th Amendment are proven successful history. The laws can change. Things can change. We can't fix hearts, but we can fix systems. I want black people to recognize that we may be 400 years behind, but this world is not permanent. Healing, humility, and honoring the Lord Jesus puts you first, no matter where you are in life. I want black, white, red, yellow, and brown people to hold hands and change what we can change together. And I've seen a lot of getting, gathering together in some of these protests. Even in my own city, there are two very distinct groups of people. There's a group of people who are charging towards a cause, a worthy cause. It's not unrealistic to, be at, to ask that black men be treated fairly by all people. It's not unfair or unrealistic to, be, to ask that people of color across the nation be treated, be treated fairly. It's not unrealistic. And I've seen white people, a majority of white people in these protests being peaceful. And then you have that splinter group that we're always going to have. It's never going to go away. Let's refer back to what the Bible says about men's hearts. Continually evil. They're never going to go away. But we can still move forward to the charge. I want black people to recognize that. And, or I want peop, uh, black people to um, stop demanding guilt. White people alive today are not responsible for the systems that were created in 15, 16, 17, 1800. It's just not, it's not realistic. Um, I want to apologize to my black counterparts for being ignorant to our history. Please forgive me for that. I want to apologize to my white counterparts for the atmosphere that was created that you are forced to live in too. I know it's hard. Mindset matters. This is my heart and I want to keep talking after the emotions of these tragic events have worn off. We need to stop being offended. If, you, if black people won't allow white people to say the wrong thing and then help them understand in grace and love, how will they know what we need? This vicious cycle of offense needs to stop. Ignorance isn't bad. Staying ignorant is. And it's important that we come to an understanding that we were all marching towards the same cause. Jesus comes to heal the broken in heart and bind up the wounds. I have been a first-hand experiencer to this. The real justice is at the feet of Jesus. In Psalm 43, it's written, Vindicate me, O God, and plead my case against an ungodly nation. Deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. It is by grace that we have been saved and through faith. And this is not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. He saved us not because of righteous things we have done, but because of his mercy. We, uh, he saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. That is where the true power comes from. That is where the healing comes from, the 
Um, compassion comes from the understanding and the wisdom comes from and the true justice comes from. We need to step out of this racial divide and hold hands. I can tell you right now that I have seen on um, so many so many platforms, I mean, couponing, <laughs> I'm a couponer, um, blog in the blogging world, um, in businesses, in, uh, I should have listed them all out. There, there are so, there are, the amount of white people who want to help is overwhelming. The amount of white people who are standing side by side with the black individual trying to help is, is, is amazing. Um, and I've seen too much of the black population um, choose hate and violence over um, communication. So uh, these were kind of, these are some of my thoughts and um, I'm just going to leave it at that and I'll post some links to some sources of the things that I found if anybody wants to further educate themselves and um, I hope to be able to talk about it moving forward. All right. Bye-bye.